this new edition of Twilight 2000 from Free League Publishing is probably or at least one of their most uh, funded and backed projects to date. And today I'm very excited to have the one and only Thomas Herrenstam from Free League Publishing on with me to chat all about it. Thomas, thank you so much for coming on and, and chatting with me. Welcome back to the show. Um, before we begin, though, I want to tell folks. Uh, hello. If, hello, hello. Uh, there are a couple things that I'm going to ask you to do if you're watching this. Uh, the first thing is, of course, is if you're interested in anything that we're talking about tonight or today, uh, click on the link in the description of this video. It's going to take you right over to the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter has just taken right off. It's one of the, it's just doing amazingly well and congratulations thomas for that Thank the other you. thing i'm gonna ask the other thing i'm gonna ask folks to do is if you're a fan of freely games or and uh twilight 2000 uh hit that like button down below that also helps us grow our communities and our show and you know and uh we also would like you to hit that subscribe button if whether you're watching this on free league or on vcg and uh you know, hit that little bell notification that lets us know that that lets you know every time we go live. We really appreciate all the communities that, that we're building because we want to grow and help uh, Free League uh, and and VCG just uh, grow and and become you know these forces of the industry that uh, that we that well I mean Free League already is. You guys just won an, 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 a golden any for uh, best publisher or favorite publisher, I guess. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was a surprise and, and fantastic, uh, you know, and uh, so we're really happy about that. Uh, I mean, really, I mean, that's that's I mean, the, the award for the games, of course, were great also. But there you had like a couple of nominees, but the favorite publisher thing is open for everybody. So that was uh, that was that was great. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it's gotten so much that you you pretty much almost every year you you're getting these these accolades, which is great. I think I even had to go through your agent to get you booked for the show for the shoot this time. Did and you had like all these demands to to come on, you know. <laughs> I had to yeah, send you like yeah, a, yeah, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Bowl, bowl of blue M and M's. What's that all about? Tom? Yeah, so, you know. Um, well, you have to, you know, you know what you want. <laughs> no, I mean, we haven't uh, really. We, we're just the same, same guys doing the same stuff. As Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that uh, uh, I'm so happy for all your success that you've had. Uh, and I, I'm always really excited to see how, how well you can right, just see you grow and grow more and more as the, uh, as the time goes time goes by let's talk us let's talk a little bit about this twilight 2000 uh kickstarter though because man this is this is amazing how well it's done uh so far uh you're at three hundred thousand almost i mean hopefully by the time this uh, this session is done you'll pass three hundred thousand you'll have four thousand backers uh, yeah it's amazing that's crazy it's, uh... Yeah, it's we. I mean, you never know what to expect, and and that that goes for every Kickstarter. You might think that we get like Buzz A or or something because we've done a couple of successful Kickstarters in the past, but that's really not the case at all. Every Kickstarter is different, and you never know. It's always a leap of faith. It's always it's always taking a big chance, and in this case, I think a little bit more than usual, maybe because we were venturing into new territory in a way with uh, Twilight Two Thousand, which because it's an established. Uh, community it's it's been around since the 80s it's it's got it's it's already got its fans its community so going in i mean i've been a, a part of that to to some extent before but but as not as a publisher but just as a regular fan but now just to go in there and kind of meet this crowd of people who they may be some overlap between our previous uh, gamers, our previous community as well, but there's also definitely new people who might not be previously familiar with our games. So, but yeah, so that made us a little bit, you know, how's this gonna work out uh, just to, to, to go into this new community and this new landscape. But uh, so on the, based on that, it's so far, it seems to be doing well. And, and uh, the feedback has been mostly, you know, really great. So it's, um, yeah, it's been a, been a couple of crazy days. It's been really, really amazing. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about this product uh, that folks are uh, are backing for. Um, I'm going to show it up on, on the screen if that's okay, and um, then we'll kind of get to folks' questions. How about that? We'll take some questions towards the, the end, and if folks have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and, and we'll we'll get to those as well. Um, let's take a look. It's just so it's it's a box set. It looks just like this so far. This is what you've unlocked uh, with the campaign. Uh, yes. You've got uh, uh, let's. Talk a little bit about what Twilight 2000 is. Well, first, first of all, it's 
it's uh, role playing in World War Three that never was. Right. This is, I mean, it is, in this in this edition, uh, that's that's what it is, right? I mean, we made that choice early on. Uh, when, I mean, we've been working on this game for over two years. Uh, yeah, so it's a quite a long time before we even went, you know, public with it because we wanted to be able to work fairly slowly and meticulously and and before we even you know talked about it and uh and yeah i mean obviously the early editions um the first and the second editions they were set in the near future because they were made in the 80s and 90s and they were set in the year 2000 obviously but we made a choice early on to set the game uh to keep that year 2000 even though it's you know in the past now that turned the game into an alternate reality game really and we just felt that was the right choice because it kept that kind of Cold War feel from the original that we wanted to keep. Uh, and also it made it, because near future settings are so hard to get right. And they grow, they age really badly because something that made sense today might just seem stupid in a year or two years. So near future is something we just felt creatively more free to go with alternate reality because then we could work with the setting the way we want to instead of trying to somehow predict the future uh and, and and because that that you kind of get stuck in the, on the wrong types of questions uh you're not creating an interesting game world you're doing something different so that's why we chose to the uh the alternate history route and keep of course the the title and the the year the game is set to uh 2000 Excellent, excellent. Let's let's just talk a little bit about what's what's in this box. Um, I'm going to tell folks that there's two yeah. variations of of uh, this product. There's a like a basic variant, which is pretty much the the retail version of this box set. Um, it's got a very like Forbidden Lands ish. If folks are familiar with with your previous products, it feels like very Forbidden Lands ish as far as that type of uh, product is concerned. Uh, let's uh, let's let's see what uh, you've got. Two two books in here. Mm -hmm. um, You've got uh, a player's manual, a referee's manual. You've got maps. Uh, you've got character sheets. Uh, you've got uh, dice. You've got cards. There's tokens. There's just a whole bunch of material in here. Um, yeah. And it just keeps growing, too, Thomas, which is which is awesome. I mean, that's the way we built this, because making... Uh, we wanted to... I mean, to, for me, one of the... I mean, the biggest inspiration is actually first edition uh, of the game. And it had also a boxed set. It had the map uh, of Poland. It had character sheets. It had those two books, uh, a player manual and a referee's manual. In this game, it's called a referee, and we kept that, uh, not a GM. Um, so we wanted to capture that feel, but then maybe do it in a bit different way that is a bit more accessible and maybe more playable, and also uh, draw in some, you know, make the mechanics a bit different maybe. But, but we wanted to still keep the feel of that first edition boxed set. So that's why we wanted to do a box set again. Uh, but then we also add, wanted to add some more tools. So that's where the battle maps, the counters, stuff like that come in to the game that we feel uh, would actually make it a lot easier to run. And you're right. Uh, you, come, you mentioned Forbidden Lands, which is our fantasy. It's a survival fantasy game. And it works quite similarly to, to Twilight 2000. That's actually no coincidence because when we designed Forbidden Lands a number of years back, Twilight 2000, was one of the inspirations on the travel rules in Forbidden Lands are, are heavily inspired by the travel rules in Twilight 2000. <laughs> so, and we are, the, what we did was that you just for fun started a campaign in first edition Twilight 2000, and we played those uh, classic modules, the uh, um, Free City of Krakow and, and uh, Pirates of the Still and so on, just for fun uh, at the office. And then that's kind of where the idea of doing a new edition came from. But then we also realized that. Yeah, when we 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 weighed the game, we played the first edition campaign, and we started designing the new edition. We wanted that sandboxy feel, where you really explore the world the way you want to. It's very map based, and uh, there's an encounter system in first edition. We wanted to take that, but grow it and and uh, develop that concept, kind of like in uh, in Forbidden Lands. So it's kind of a game where you can really. It's very much procedurally generated. You travel the land, you explore, you can scavenge for stuff, you can, and you have these encounters. So the game kind of builds on itself in a sense. You can also add a longer arc and, and do that, but the, you have like a core, like a gameplay that kind of just keeps moving that you really, you can run the game basically with zero prep. Uh, and this was nice. kind of the case in, in first edition also, only it was a bit harder to use maybe. 
So that's kind of where we wanted to go and add these extra stuff into the box. But then the box is really expensive to make with a lot of stuff in it. That's tricky. So that's why we built the Kickstarter in this way that we made. Like we wanted to do a box and we had, but then we added some of the components that we wanted to do uh, as stretch goals so that we knew we had coverage for them. And now basically we have unlocked everything that we had to in our original idea of what to bring into the game into the game so now we have to come up with this stuff so but that's that's another. awesome yeah we'll, we'll talk we'll talk a little bit about the stretch goals and maybe hopefully maybe i might be able to pry any future stretch goals information from you and i don't know maybe we'll, we'll see i don't know maybe maybe, maybe. Yeah. um uh, let's talk a little bit about so one thing that i really love about uh, free league games is how you take this year zero engine and you tweak it and you just you like the bones are there that they're same, but, but like things kind of get tweaked here or there, different mechanics. And it fits the, the, the setting and the, the dynamics of, of each game. And it really kind of clicks. Uh, we've seen it with alien. We've seen it with forbidden lands. We've seen it with, with all, you know, Coriolis. We've seen, we've seen it with all. This one kind of takes that, this, that to a whole nother level. If uh, with Twilight 2000, do you want to talk a little bit about how you've modified the Year Zero engine and how you've made it so that it kind of is familiar for folks that are, are familiar with your games, and then also, you know, maybe it's it's kind of catering to the Twilight 2000 uh, audience that's already there. Right. Yeah. I mean, this was the main design challenge, rules wise, for the game was was obviously how to. Because the early editions, uh, that they come from uh, a very simulationist design uh, philosophy, and it's very detailed and very crunchy. Uh, and that's cool. I mean, I enjoyed that to a point. Uh, we, uh, Freely Games traditionally, the previous ones, come from a tradition which is a bit more emphasizes playability a little bit more, I would say. And and you still want it, to, it, our rules are generally a lot about promoting the right feel for the game rather than the minute details. Um, so trying to combine these for Twilight 2000 is like the main challenge, but it's been a fun. And and the, the result now, I mean, the, the current version that we have um, is it's it's crunchier for sure than, than for example, Mutant Year Zero or, or something like that. Uh, I think the crunchiest before was Forbidden Lands and Twilight 2000 is, is crunchier than that. But we still wanted to keep that uh, playability and accessibility that we think uh, really work in, in the rule set that we have used. And so it's trying to find that balance where the game feels, it gives, it feels authentic. I mean, the results, what you do in the game, it produces authentic results. So what feels authentic, realistic is a hard word to use, but at least the sense of that. Um, so you, and you, uh, rather than focusing on getting very, very detailed. So, I mean, one 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 thing we're doing, uh, we're keeping the number of attributes and skills fairly low, like we do in most of our games. But then we add a bunch of specialties. The specialties are kind of like talents in the other game, but here we take it a bit to another level. The specialties are are more important, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. So, the specialties are how you specialize your character and fine tune them. So, you and this is the benefit of doing it this way is that you have the broad skills and attributes. That means you have an immediate grasp of what you can do. Uh, you don't have to get bogged down and check your skill list every time because you basically have a good idea um, uh, of what your character can do. It also helps because if you have a really long skill list, that means characters will lack a lot of those skills. So basically you get in a situation where there's a lot of stuff you cannot do because you lack the relevant skill. Uh, with the broader skills, you get around that problem a little bit, so you get more, like you get a uh, more agency for players because you can do more stuff basically. But then you also want to be able to fine tune your character, and that you do with a specialty. So that's kind of how that works. Um, we also add, um, obviously, combat is a big thing. Uh, it's very important that the right gear, like weapons, vehicles, stuff like that, that matters. It has to mm -hmm. matter what kind of gear and weapons you have. It has to matter if you attack a tank from the front, from the rear, or that sure. has to make a difference. It cannot just, in other games, we don't get into that level of detail. Here, you kind of have to, uh, to a point. Um, but still, it's, it's trying to stay away from getting bogged down in very minute details, because that kind of slows gameplay down a lot. And that we want to avoid.
Well, it looks like we uh, kind of lost time. Well, that's the balance we're been looking for. And we... am I? Hello. Oh, still yep. on. Yep, you're still on. It, oh, it, it kind of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the internet here seems to be acting up, but yeah, we'll see. No, so I mean, we'll we produced the alpha PDF for the full, pretty much the full games uh, game rules. Uh, oh, and nice. We'll, um, share that with all the backers uh, in the fall, um, and you know, then everyone can check whether we they think we we hit the right balance or not. And this is also goes back to the community thing I mentioned before that uh, we want to marry together these communities and maybe the free league community uh who kind of enjoys our rules um, and and we want to ease them into twilight 2000 which is increases the crunchiness a bit and but uh, and we also want to kind of maybe invite the hardcore twilight 2000 players from earlier editions to try out the free league way uh, a little bit but so kind of meeting in the middle and finding a new system that kind of works for both then of course everyone won't get Right. I mean, you can't can't please everyone, uh, no matter what. But uh, looks like we have uh, game the game rule. Uh, so there. yeah. So I mean, that's kind of what we're looking for to to strike that balance between uh, you know authenticity, uh, realism, and, and playability. Nice. Nice. Um, can you talk a little bit about the combat system, like how how that works a little bit? I had someone in the uh, com I, they the comments are, are are going pretty quickly, but someone was asking about how the combat system works in this in this game. Is that anything that you can touch on uh, real quick? Oh, Tom, Thomas uh, looks like he's Thomas looks like he's uh, frozen for a second. Um, Sure. Yeah. Okay. Different. Excellent. Let's see Hang if. On. Uh, One second. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll let Thomas get to his. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Like I said, let, let me know if you have any questions in the uh, in the chat, and uh, we'll get to those here uh, shortly. Uh, there we go. Thomas is back. There we go. I'm back. Good. Yeah, you're Sorry, back. I'm not... That's that's I okay. If this keeps happening, I could switch over, but. That could also cause trouble. So okay, we'll we'll yeah. try a bit more. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, right. You want to talk? We, we were just talking about the combat system. Uh, someone had mentioned earlier uh, that they were kind of curious how the combat system worked for for this new edition. Oh no, Tom, Thomas keeps uh, keeps keeps freezing up. It's all right. Um, hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I'm on a different uh, network now. Let's maybe that works better. Okay, excellent. Are you hearing me okay right now? We are. We are hearing you just just fine. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Okay, so let's try this for a while. See if it if it okay works better. Right. The, the the combat system, of course. I mean, that is a big big thing. Um. Really, I mean, we will do a proper update about this during the campaign, so you know people can you know check it and and uh, get into it a bit more. But just uh, to to briefly touch on it, it's uh, it retains really elements from both other free league games. Uh, it has a similar initiative system with the uh, you have the initiative cards. They're all also included now in, as, as cards in the Kickstarter. There is a uh, what else? There is a system for. Um, I mean, basically, you have the same type of action, the short, uh, the, the fast and slow action thing, uh, which uh, that's still there. Um, so that's there from the Twilight 2000 other editions that we picked up. It's like coolness under fire is a big thing. This is something that we really want to focus on. Like I mentioned, without going into getting super detailed, we rather want to kind of uh, simulate or, or, or emulate the kind of feel of combat and a sense of authenticity and one thing we're focusing on quite a bit is something like suppressive fire that not just kind of in most most games you kind of just when you you know shoot to hit and that that's pretty much that and that was uh, but here we want to make it 
that really suppressive fire and using that in different ways is really uh, to advance positions and to covering fire and stuff like that is really important. So we want to get that's a big part of the of the game rules also. Uh, the vehicle combat system is a bit more detailed than in other games. There is component damage, which is something we haven't really done much of before. So it, it's also similar to the old Twilight 2000, but less, more streamlined in a sense. But still, it, you can get specific uh, components of your of your vehicle hit and damaged and, and so on. There is uh, the, the core game rule right now, uh, the combat system uses, uh, it's a hex system. A hex, you use hexagon maps which right. are 10 meters across. And this is something new that that's, we haven't used that in any other free league game. It's actually not also in any uh, Twilight 2000 game before either. But it, So it's kind of a new thing, but we figured it made a lot of sense. It kind of harkens back to these kind of war games, the early war games with the counters and, and, and the hex, hexagon maps. And we really think that works. Sure. So it kind of has a feel to it that works with war gaming. And that's something that came back from our initial campaign of, of uh, first edition, uh, Twilight 2000 that also grew into to play testing this new edition is that you get these combat encounters and the the you, terrain matters and they often start they often start out at some range uh, so having maps for these combat encounters felt really natural to be able to really utilize the terrain and, and that and that's where we kind of wanted to use this 10 meter hex system for combat. Of course, if you want to play Theater of the Mind, you can do that too. You can just kind of, sure. I mean, that, that works fine. You'll have, just have to wing it a little bit. Uh, but if you will use the maps, that's kind of, you can get more strategic where it comes to combat. And nice. that's also what we added, added these uh, combat maps and counters uh, as components in the game. And the combat maps are kind of cool. Now we have uh, eight double-sided, so there's 16 like generic maps that can also be combined in different ways. They're built in a set in a way so you can put them together uh, in different ways. So you can create a unique new like battlefield for random encounters every time because that kind of random encounter thing is not just you meet two D you know D six enemies or something. They're quite detailed and have a little bit of story, kind of like in Forbidden Lands. So each random encounter is actually a little bit of a mini scenario type thing, and then you use these modular maps to kind of present the terrain for them. So that kind of, uh, they really work together. The travel rules, the combat rules, and, and the maps and all of that, it really, that they kind of mesh together. So uh, that's that's very briefly uh, the combat system. Sure. Critical injuries is an important thing. They work kind of like in Coriolis, like in other freely games, you get a creative hit once you're, you're, in, you're broken or incapacitated by damage. In this game, you, it doesn't work that way. Instead, you get you take a critical hit if the damage uh, surpasses the crit level of the weapon. So you can actually take a crit but stay on your feet uh, potentially. Oh. So okay. uh, it's a bit different in that sense. Uh, what else? I mean, of course, there's a lot of there's like I mentioned. Um, I mean, heavy weapons is important, like you know, uh, artillery, indirect fire, all of that. Uh, radiation, of course. Mm -hmm. is, I mean, stuff like that, and it's still a survival game. So that kind of also goes back to Mutant Year Zero and uh, and and Forbidden Lands, but it takes it a bit further. Um, what else? I mean, it does work a little bit different in this the way skill roles are made because uh, this game this, that's the main big difference that it's that it's not a dice pull game really. Right. right. That you use two dice normally. You can actually add more dice to it. So it kind of becomes a dice pool system in a way, but the core, to make a core skill roll, you use two dice, or sometimes even one or two. If you have the skill, you use two. If you don't have the skill, you'll only roll your attribute die. So, uh, and that makes the pushing mechanism a little bit um, different. Uh, so that's um, Kind of a, that, that's a difference from other free league games, uh, I guess. Um, hit location is another thing that we have in this game that we don't really do in other games. Uh, so you roll when you attack you know, your hit location. So that's uh, normally we only have hit location as a part of a critical hit or something. But here you roll that before. So it matters if you have like, you know, armor and different parts of your body or something. Okay, so that, sure. that that's sense. also a level of detail that we don't normally do, but we felt it was appropriate for this game. Absolutely. So that, yeah, some examples of of uh, from the combat system. Excellent. I like it. It uh, it sounds like it's 
and you can always probably probably pare back some of the rules if you wanted to, if you want, you know, like you yeah. said, if you're playing theater of the mind and 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 Absolutely. you know, whatever your 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 group is kind of le leans towards. Right. Um, let's I mean, that's, talk. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I just want to mention that. I mean, that also goes back to giving uh, tools in the hands of players and, and gaming groups that we and that right. goes very much for this game as well that we want to give. Uh, different ways, offer different ways of playing the game. So uh, that also goes for, I mean, how detailed you want your combat. You can definitely scale back the stuff that you feel is too detailed and, and keep it simple if you want. It, that that works fine. Uh, it also goes back to, I mean, there is a military, obviously military component to Twilight 2000. Uh, and that's still there, but we also want to increase the focus a little bit on civilians. So you can definitely play Civilians also, you don't have to play soldiers if you don't want to. You can definitely play this as a pretty straight post-apocalyptic game. You can play any type of, of, of survivors, really. Uh, of course, art-wise, and for the focus will be uh, on the military, but you can definitely have a mixed group because, I mean, the, the, the armies have fallen apart, so everyone's trying to get by, and there's definitely, like, the example texts that we have in the game are, are from a mixed group of, like, local civilians and soldiers trying to to help each other out so there's definitely uh we're trying to kind of get that in there as well that you, you can play this game as a survival post-apocalyptic game if you're not you're not so interested in the military part the game still has something to offer but then of course the military stuff is there, there as well because that's kind of part of the dna of twilight 2000 so sure. you can play the game very much the way you want to let's let's just uh, i'm gonna the, the one of the highly ask questions uh, on the Kickstarter and it's just kind of uh, interesting uh, is about the the deluxe version of this product which is going right. to be just uh, you said it's just just Kickstarter exclusive right you can only get this through the Kickstarter this uh, this limited edition deluxe uh, uh, yes set um, it is uh, it's a set that uh, has a tin for instead yeah. of the box for the box uh, it looks amazing and and uh, it's it's very cool uh, so you can you can pay and, and pledge for for this version of of the game on on right. Kickstarter. The one question that folks seem to have with this uh, this version, though, Thomas, is the how are you going to protect the books inside yeah, with these round yeah. with these round corners? Because uh, if you've got square books and and uh, they shift around or whatever, yeah, it, yeah. it is a concern. And and uh, is, you know, uh, I figured yeah. I figured we'd get it covered yeah. before no, uh, before. Sure. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's something we'll... We haven't worked out all the details uh, around that, but it's definitely... We will work it out. I mean, I like everything else on the Kickstarter, the designs are not final, so there is still work to be done on finalizing exactly these things. Uh, so the, the image you saw there, it, it's, it, it's, it will be along those lines. So the inspiration is like an ammo can. So get that's why it looks the way it does, obviously. Yep. Yep. Uh, but uh, it, we will make sure the books and the other components inside are protected uh, from being dented. Exactly how that will look, there is definitely there is different ways to do that. We're discussing that with the factory at the moment, so I'll get back to you on exactly how that will be. For for the moment, this is a, you know it's a work in progress, and this is kind of how it's going to look. But there are details left to be to be worked out. But I don't think anyone should be worried uh, of getting damaged damaged stuff uh, in there. So we'll make sure that there's going to be some packaging or something to, to make sure everything is is protected well inside the box. So uh, that's that. Yeah, that's great. I, and I'm going to tell folks, if this is the first time, and, I, and the one thing that, that I keep reading on the, there's a great Facebook group uh, for uh, probably 2000 from by, by uh, Free League Publishing. Uh, so if you haven't joined that Facebook group, you should. But I love seeing so many people post, hey, this is my first Kickstarter that I've ever backed. Like I yeah. see that like almost on the daily at this point. Uh, this is my first, I'm so excited for this. This is my first Kickstarter. And and I'm going to tell folks that if, if this is your first Kickstarter, Free League does Kickstarters like phenomenally well. I, and I've said this before in other sessions, Tom, Thomas, uh, you, you are very communicative communicative you tell us you know what's what's going on you give us the alpha and the beta rules to try out you know it sometimes if there's delays you let us know that hey you know there's this going on we're gonna have to push back you know shipping out because such and such happened or something you know it's it, and, and you do you use the the kickstarter platform the way it's intended and and it's really really great to see and i think that's another reason why you know you've had so much success so i'm gonna tell folks 
you are shy about Kickstarter and, and you want to give Kickstarter a try, do it with with Free League because uh, you all know uh, they just they just do great stuff on 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 uh, like on that platform. No, I mean we try to like you mentioned. I think being communicative uh, is is key. Uh, things will happen. I mean this is game design. Uh, things will happen along the way you didn't expect. Uh, there are there's always a risk of delays, even though we always try to avoid them. Uh, I'm sure we've done. I mean mistakes where we didn't communicate well enough, and there's definitely stuff that have happened we've been doing this for for quite some time but that's really our goal is to stay communicative and let people know what's happening and if there are any delays or whatever we'll be clear and open about that and uh and yeah and really try to deliver what we promised or more yeah, and and i'll tell you that the the quality of the products that, that i mean I, i'm a little biased but but uh, the quality of the products that, that you uh deliver are, is just top notch and and uh, you know, it, I don't think anybody should be concerned about uh, having anything, you know, arrive in poor shape because uh, you just you want to make sure that uh, po folks are getting uh, a quality product for. Yeah. And for we always I mean, if something gets damaged in transit, which always happens in shipping when you ship thousands of packages all over the world, there's you know, there's always going to happen. Something is lost or damaged. We always compensate and send replacements uh, for that. Uh, so there you, you don't risk like not getting your 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 stuff. Uh, let's let's just briefly uh, talk about stretch goals real quick. The question that uh, the folks have seemed to be asking quite a bit um, it was one of the stretch goals was to have this as a virtual tabletop platform. Uh, what version of the virtual tabletop uh, are you thinking this might end up on? Because that seems to be uh, there's quite a few of them right now, and and uh, yes. people seem to have favorites. And and yeah, you know, I'm. I'm you know, I, I think that that's uh, kind of a, no, it's a good, good, good question. question. Sure. Yeah, and really, it's it's it, it. We haven't decided yet. Is short answer. We we cannot yet say which platform it will be. It could even be more than one. <clears throat> we recently, I mean, this year uh, now, we we have started an initiative where we focused a lot on virtual tabletops. We launched the Tales from the Loop starter set recently on Roll20, and we are releasing the full Test from the Loop game on Roll20 very soon. We were also working on uh, the Alien game for Fantasy Grounds will be uh, launching pretty soon, and uh, the Alien also will be on Roll20. Uh, for Twilight, it could very well be one of these two, or both. Okay. Uh, we're also looking at, there's also um, uh, Foundry, the other one, and, and some others. So we'll have to hold off on letting you know exactly which will be the one. Uh, the reason for that is that these these platforms have different ways of offering stuff, uh, material, basically, and uh, just how that is structured um, is different. And we need to make that work uh, just to with them and have an agreement with them that works. And we're not there yet. Sure. We haven't, you know, made any agreement with them that is final in that sense. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why uh, we cannot say yet which platform it's going to be. There's there's some more talks with those platforms before we can fully fully decide. But I mean, since we will be offering this uh, for free, uh, or, I mean, as a part of of you, you, people will not be paying extra for it. It's included. It's a stretch goal. So that means no matter which platform it is. People will be able to pick it up and play it there. Sure. Uh, it might not be everybody's, you know, everyone has their favorite platform. And, you know, there's always obviously not this, the one we choose will not be everyone's favorite. So there's always that risk, but at least you get it in a platform that you will be able to to use. And it's going to be one of the fairly known known platforms. So hopefully uh, that will work well for, for as many people as possible. And like I said, if we're very open to launching it on more platforms also, uh, as we go along. So this is mainly a matter of which, where we start. I mean, the goal where, I mean, that's not only because of the pandemic, but that kind of sped things up for us a little bit is that we want to focus on getting our games on these virtual tabletops, I mean, all of our games as quickly as we can, basically, and making sure that it's, you know, the quality is good, but that's, so that's why we're working on that now. There's work being done Oh, I mentioned Tales, I mentioned Alien, there's also Forbidden Lands coming to Fantasy Grounds uh, and, and more. So, I mean, basically, we want all our games to be available on these platforms. Uh, and also, I should mention, there there are already uh, some 
some um, fan created uh, like character sheets and stuff like that already up for most of our games. Uh, Simbaroom is already available on Fantasy Grounds also, I should say, like a, a full module uh, for the full game. But also for the other games, you can get character sheets and, and tools for pretty much all our games already. It's fan created stuff, but that it's usually really good. So if you want to get started on, on Freely Games Online, there is plenty to find already. Excellent. Excellent. Let's um, let's just go right to the questions because uh, yeah. I know you're kind of limited on time. We're, 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 we've kind of uh, used up a lot. There, there's there's some really great questions that that uh, I sure. that have been asked previously, and I'm going to tell folks if, if you do have additional questions, let us know in the comments, and I'll try to I'll try to fit them in. Uh, Michael Kwan uh, asks, is there any chance of this having a hardback uh, product? Is there a hardback book for you know? Uh, right. Right um, thing? It's it's a good question. Uh, usually, uh, having a hardback box inside a box, it's kind of tricky. Problem is, we already did that once, so it's right. it's you know it's obviously it's possible because we did it with Forbidden Lands has exactly that. It has a box set with the hard book, uh, hardback box inside. Now, that that was a fantasy game and it has those uh, like that fake leather mm -hmm. uh, cover and, stuff. and that kind of feels really right for a fantasy game to do that. For Twilight 2000, the look we're going for with the books is kind of like an old field manual thing. It's like right. it's actually the designer, Christian, he took his inspiration. It's from an actual field manual of the US Army from the 60s, I think. But then there is nothing really there from that. But just the, that was like the main inspiration he looked at to get that feel. And that for me doesn't just doesn't really work that well with a hardback book. It just doesn't for me. It doesn't quite work that well aesthetically. It's a matter of opinion, but that's just how we feel. And and it is tricky to do. And we were doing uh, like so. I, at the moment, I don't see us doing hardback books. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say never. Not not no never in a million years. It, it I guess it could happen. But but at the moment, it's not something we're we're likely to proceed on. Okay. The the other thing that uh, I'll mention is that shipping hardback books is also more costly. So that's true. they weigh you know way more. So yeah. there's more to ship. And but I mean, really, I mean, a very very few games that I know of have hardback books inside a box. Normally, that's right. just not the way it's done. We did it once. I don't think we'll be doing it again. To be honest uh it worked okay. for that game but i don't think it's like the new standard or anything so i think it's really it's like either hardback book or the box set and if I, for this game with all the stuff we wanted to get in there i think the box set is 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 the the better way to go um i, I think i think it was vanka 38 asks any chance of a miniatures stretch goal or miniatures for this line in general Right. I mean, miniatures are really cool. I mean, we're looking at miniatures games, skirmish games for a number of our titles, actually. It's something we're looking at. Uh, we love those things. Uh, so that's that's not... But for Twilight at the moment, there's... I mean, the, uh, definitely you can use uh, miniatures for, for to play combat. Since terrain and, and, and combat is, is, is important if you want to make the map big enough to kind of be the right scale for, for have using miniatures. Uh, and you can even have a diorama or, um, so, I mean, you can really uh, use miniatures. I think at the moment there's good stuff out there like Team Yankee. I mean, there's a bunch of, since this is, um, you know, it's 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 soldiers, modern soldiers kind of, or, or civilians, but it's a modern, uh, modern era, uh, you can, uh, uh, use uh, there's quite a lot of miniatures out there that you can probably use really well with Twilight 2000. So at the moment, we're we're not looking into making. I mean, making miniatures is a big project. We will not be adding it to this Kickstarter. That would be insane. And just the, the <laughs> creating the sculpt designs, everything right. for and make miniatures. We, we have done it. We did it for Crusader Kings. We're doing it now for the Tales from the Loop board game. But that is a whole project on its own. It's not something you throw in as a stretch goal late in the game so definitely not for this kickstarter but i mean if the line twilight 2000 continues to do well uh it, it, people enjoy it and miniatures is something that keeps coming up as, as something that community wants then we're definitely not shutting the door on that uh, later down the line excellent excellent um let's see magnus asked will this uh will twilight 
this version of two, Twilight uh, 2000 only be in English? Right. Uh, um, no, it will. Uh, as if you said that his name was Magnus, I suspect he, yeah. he's probably Swedish. Um, but I'm, I'm we had we did consider a Swedish. Yeah, I'm guessing too, because I get that we did consider a Swedish edition, and I think we even talked about the possibility. So that kind of, so we get quite a lot of questions, um, and I, that's perfectly understandable. Now, and also we're. Uh, there will uh, be a Polish edition, which is kind of cool, since the game is set. Poland is like the core setting. You can also play in Sweden or somewhere else in Europe or wherever you want. But Poland is like in the first edition, is like the core setting. And we figured it was only fair to bring in some Polish people uh, in the game, and uh, since we're going to set it there. And so that kind of made sense to us. And we have a great partner called Black Monk, who are doing Tales from the Loop in Polish. They're awesome, uh, and they are in on this as well. Uh, so they will be doing a Polish version pretty soon. But that's going to be its own separate thing. But it, they're they're doing that, and they're also acting as consultants on on. Uh, so they already helped us with uh, like the just the campaign descriptions of Poland and the map. They're getting the names right because Polish has a lot of like small little uh, extra signs and dots and and stuff on their letters. Um, so to get everything right from the Polish perspective was important to us so that we brought them on. So they will be doing a Polish version of the game. So that we know for sure. Uh, this, and we did consider a Swedish version, but it's, it's kind of hard to do. We have done it for many games. Most of them that started out in Swedish, we did a Swedish and English edition at the same time. We did it for Forbidden Lands, uh, Simbroom has it, Mutant Year Zero. I mean, most of the games do, even uh, Vazen that we released now. But in all of those cases, it kind of made sense. I, I mean, there's the game was published in Swedish first or something like that. For Alien, we didn't do it. We just didn't feel the need really to have a, a, a Swedish edition. And for Twilight 2000, it's an international game. Uh, it's history. It, it's been played in Sweden, but it's not a Swedish game. It doesn't have a history going you know, here in any particular way. So it doesn't quite make a lot of sense. Uh, but Maybe. I mean, we haven't totally said no. It's just a matter of, because uh, it's always tricky. Uh, what, what happens when you do two languages at the same time? It's, of course, there's extra work of, of translating uh, and, and proofreading and doing the layout all over again. So it's a lot of extra work. And there's also the risk when you do it at the same time is that you have to make sure that if you make a change in the English one, it has to make the same change in the Swedish one. And they have to, so they don't start like, going there, there starts to be small differences. So just keeping the, the two editions exactly the same is also a lot of work. So we, we've done this, but it's a lot of, it, it does make things more complicated. And I, at this point, we're thinking it's better to focus on the English edition uh, to make sure we get that right and consider translations after than to do several languages at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah. The other the question that uh, you know, I, there's this guy Matthew uh, Tyler Jones. Uh, do, do you know this guy? I don't know if yeah, you know this guy. Heard of yeah, uh, Matthew was asking. Yeah, he was asking if uh, the Twilight 2000 will be available for uh, the Free League Workshop. Right. Good question. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, that's very much the idea. I think this game, if anyone, is perfect for the Free League Workshop. I'll have to work the details out with, uh, you know, the Mark Miller and the license owners, but I don't think it, I hope it's not going to be a problem. I, I really don't expect that, but I just want to say it because it's it's still not, we haven't had the discussion yet, but yes. Right. Free League Workshop is a place at drivethroughrpg.com. It's a community content program that we have that basically means any, you, we offer templates so people can create stuff for our games uh, and publish them at drive RPG and sell them there as well. And you have a little like a template, the design template. So you'll see that it's freely workshops, so but it's like fan creations. It's community content. It's not official per se, but it, it, it's going to help it look great. It's going to have the same kind of uh, graphic design as the official products. And you, there's also a great way to build a community so people can get together there and, and, and create their stuff. And I think for Twilight 2000, uh, there's always, all throughout the years, people have been creating great stuff for the early edi earlier editions. They've been doing that throughout the years. So it, was never, it never stopped. 
So, and this is just a, so I think there's a lot of people out there who are already creating their own stuff. And I think this game also lends itself really well to do that because it's modern day kind of. So it's, it's hard, it's fairly easy to get the, you can create, like, I know there's like, you can do like a geographical uh, source books for areas that, because we will do some of that, but we obviously we won't cover every corner of the world. Uh, but if you want your, to create a source book of your own home country where, where you live, because you want to, you can do that. It's like the perfect example of, of how to do uh, like a source book for this game. And Free League Workshop is a great place to, to get that out there. So uh, definitely, yes, as soon as possible, basically. Uh, hopefully at, when we launch the game next year, or even before that, when we get it to backers, I hope that Free League uh, Workshop will have templates and everything uh, ready to go for Twilight 2000. So that's that's a big yes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this kind of ties into this the, the Free League Workshop as well, but do you, the um, Man of Action asked uh, previously the future of this game yeah. for for uh, for Free League. Uh, is this something that uh, you see uh, supplements coming out, uh, you know, years down the line? I mean, you, you've got... Evidently, there's, there's this great fan base that... Uh, has decided that the, they're they're really on board with this this new edition of Twilight Two Thousand is what I, I know you probably can't give too many details, but what's your overall plan for uh, Twilight Two Thousand as far as a brand for for Free League uh, now that uh, you've seen the success? No, I mean we were always planning on doing expansions for the game. Actually, the first one is already written. Uh, Chris Lights, nice. who's the key, he's like the lead setting and scenario writer for the game. He already wrote the first expansion. We haven't edited it. It's not done uh, yet, but it's already the first draft of the full uh, module is already written. And what we're planning to do is, is to be planning modules that kind of follow the same trajectory overall as the first three modules of the for the first edition. These classic okay. modules called, it's a free seat there, Krakow, Pirates of the Vistula and Ruins of Warsaw. And those were very much geographically specific. They were about Krakow, the Vistula River and Warsaw. We you can do that, but we want to kind of create. We want to open it up a bit. So basically, the first book is going to be about cities playing in cities in in this setting, and there will be Krakow will be in there as a sample, as an example of a city. We also have an example from Sweden of an of a city, and also like guidelines how to play in city, any city because you can use a lot of the same tools wherever you want to play. So I mean that's that's really um, the way to. We'll open it up a little bit, and the, probably the second expansion is is going to be about like waterways, not only a specific river, but rather rivers, lakes, oceans playing at sea, basically. So, and and there will be more, you know, examples of that. Examples of it'll be the Vistula will be in there, but also other examples. And the third one will be focused on like large scale battles, uh, battles like big, big, big fights, like uh, so you can kind of have that. Uh, it will probably add rules for playing uh, large confrontations between larger forces, and then there will be scenario locations around that. So basically, th that's the first three that we're looking at doing right now. But then we have a lot of other ideas as well, but those three are like the first. And I should also mention that we have something, um, it's mentioned on the Kickstarter page, uh, it's something we, we, it's from the Free City of Krakow old module, something called Operation Reset. It had a very specific meaning in that scenario. We're taking that concept and running with it a little bit. So we're keep this is going to be a, like a like a thread that continues throughout these expansions. Operation reset is going to be a kind of a thing that it, it's it's almost going to be you know what is the matrix? It's going to be a thing that kind of you you discover a bit by bit uh, by playing the game, but you'll. It's not all going to be about that, but it's just going to be something that comes back. You hear this name, you learn some more about it, and that's going to be like a, like a, like a backstory, like a thread, something going on in the background that you kind of learn more and more about as you as you go along. Um, what this is, and then of course in the end we're probably going to have a, like a finale, like a, a big what it like the the end game of of Operation Reset. So. But you don't have to focus on that if you don't want to, but it's going to be kind of be there in the background. It's, it, in a way, it's kind of similar to the path to Eden in Mutant Year Zero, where there is a, you can do a lot of stuff. You can explore the zone and everything. Uh, but then there is this path to Eden, this place Eden in Mutant Year Zero that you're trying to find and that you can do it quickly or you can do it over. You can do it in 10 sessions or 100 sessions. It kind of, 
and you could decide in the group how quickly you advance toward that target. We're doing something similar here with the uh, with Operation Reset. So that's also something we'll be getting back to throughout these expansions to add some more intel about what that actually means. Nice, nice. I think we've pretty much uh, covered most of the questions. I know that you have, uh, we've kind of cut this short and I want to tell folks that I want to appreciate everyone that, that tuned in. Um, I'm going to tell, uh, again, I'll say if, if you are interested in any of this uh, that we've talked about uh, and you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, please check out the link in the description of this video. Uh, give, give it, a, give it a, a look through. It's got some great, uh, great, content is some great uh, I think it's just gonna be a huge uh, product line for uh, free league publishing the other thing that I'm going to tell folks is if you're watching this either on uh, victory condition gaming or on uh, free league's YouTube channel please hit that subscribe button and that like button down below uh, that helps us grow our communities and uh, we definitely love supporting uh, free league and and of course uh, we, I know free league uh, you guys just love your community as well and and uh, all the folks yep. that uh, are behind your products uh and, and make sure to, to hit that subscribe button we really really appreciate everybody that that uh, gets behind what uh, what we what we do as uh, for projects uh thomas if, if folks want to know more about free league where, where should they go well yeah you can always check our website it's freeleaguepublishing.com freeleaguepublishing in one word dot com you can find us there uh we're at you know the usual places twitter as well and of course the current kickstarter for twilight 2000 you can find uh, information there about us and and uh you can also get our other games there uh there's a also there's an email list a newsletter for twilight 2000 that you can sign up to and uh yeah that's that's probably the best places to start excellent excellent all right, folks, that's going to do it for this q and uh, If you have any more questions, I I'm going to tell you, go check out the Kickstarter. Leave a comment in the in the Kickstarter because uh, I know that the Freely team is uh, very good about uh, getting back and answering questions on there as well. And and I'm sure that uh, any questions that uh, that you might have will either be answered there in the comments or on the uh, on, on future updates. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact and the Kickstarter has already come and gone, uh, please let me know in the in the comments. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to find this uh, product at retail shelves. Uh, ask your friendly local game store to uh, to, you know, stock it uh, once it's once it's available. And I'll tell folks that if you are watching this in a, your retailer, there are retail pledges uh, available for this uh, for this project, uh, because uh, I know Free League does a great, great job of, of uh, supporting brick and mortar stores. And uh, you can take a look at that. Uh, I know quite a few stores that, uh, that that really hop on pretty much every single project that uh, you folks put out. So uh, yeah, it's uh, you offer uh, a really great margin for for uh, brick and mortar. So all right, folks, that's going to do it for this session. Be safe, be well, and remember winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye.